Hey guys, so I'm going to try to keep this video kind of short, but I get questions quite a bit about all kinds of different things. Most recently, someone was asking, what is dirty modeling? And that's after watching one of my previous time-lapse videos where I said I was doing some dirty modeling. And so in my mind, I break up 3D models into two categories. Uh, there's pre-production concept design category, and then there's the production side of things. And so what dirty modeling for me is, is it's just the initial steps of creating a concept where you just try to go as fast as possible to create the big idea of what it is that you want to create. In this case, it's this little uh, drone uh, rover thing, or whatever you want to call it, I don't know. And what makes this really a dirty model, though, is when we break it apart, it's, um, it's not finished. There's a lot of errors in it. It's end guns, it's triangles, there's faces missing, it's not perfect yet. Uh, it's not even finished. There's just stuff missing in the back. There's no suspension. It's just kind of tossed together there's a lot of intersection going on and i'm just trying to fill out the whole shape here in its entirety uh, what this thing might look like uh, with lighting and all kinds of other fun stuff added into that mix and that's part of the concept and the design part of it anyways because if we take a look at how this was put together uh, you'll see that first it just starts as a plane and i start flying through this plane just doing some cuts and edges and uh, bevels and bullions and all kinds of other fun stuff all the basic stuff's in here. A lot of knife cuts, bevels, chamfers. Um, excuse me. I don't think I used many bevels, just one. Anyways. Uh, but just a lot of knife cuts and playing with angles and the design. Just seeing what I can create. Quickly going through it, just throwing it together. And uh, trying to get to that point where I can see what, what this thing might actually turn into or what it might look like. So trying to establish some kind of base forms and shapes and... Uh, design languages maybe uh, as we go through this real quick it's it's an hour long project it's an hour and eight minutes long for this part in total it's less than two hours for the whole uh, thing we just looked at there doing some bullions putting in some lights throwing things on there that you know are a little bit more greeble like perhaps some subtractions and yeah so it's just getting the idea going as fast as possible even if it's rough, right? It's not about polishing anything at this stage. It's just about getting that big idea going. And there you have it. So the next part of this, of course, is going to be... Um, I was curious what it would look like with some lighting on it to see how the shadows affect the design. And after doing that and kind of liking it, I was just curious what it might look like inside of a little set, little scene. So I'll start making the scene here real quick for the other half of this. Just putting together some trusses, pillars, basic walls, modular walls. And uh, the floor is not modular, but I'd have to work all that out later on. And so this is the initial steps for creating a concept, for myself anyways. Uh, the reason it's just the initial steps is because there's a lot of stuff that still needs to be answered. Uh, I would start working on things like functionality to make sure there's clearance for different mechanical pieces and things like that. Uh, but if you're doing a whole environment, you might do a whole environment this way where you're establishing like footprints and props and walls and different things like that. It doesn't have to be modular right away, but you do need to start getting the, uh, the heights right and all kinds of other fun stuff like that. It's, it could be quite useful, the scale of things, the proportions of things, things like that. And uh, play around with some base materials as well. Usually I do my texture work in... Uh, substance and then go over to game engine as soon as possible and i try and try not to do too much in blender i try to do the model the uv mapping in blender to, and then once it's baked and textured i try to go to game engine usually not back to blender uh, sometimes you have to go back to blender though and tweak things so I might bring textures back in blender at some point i didn't get to that in this obviously that's more of the production side of things but it definitely can um run a concept piece through substance as well if you want to just slap some uh, smart materials on it or something like that nothing wrong with that you can also bring materials over into blender with the substance add on if you have that and um yeah so that that's the whole process there pretty much everything was in that video except for about 10 minutes worth of cutting out this little section over here uh slap you know i just put on a um a concrete material it's a little glossy right now but just a little Concrete material in this area. Just some basic metals and color schemes, basically. 
Uh, I'm just going with some very simple, simple things. And uh, this guy over here, this is, um, it's had a little too much to drink, I think, but I was just playing with physics for whatever reason. I got caught up in that for just a moment, but, uh, anyways, so he was standing and he fell over, but, and, uh, it, so that's what dirty modeling is for myself anyways. Now, someone was also asking, you know, how do you speed up? Uh, the process of creating your 3D models. And I find that this, just coming up with the base elements here like this is extremely important for myself anyways, because this is establishing the base design of the, of, in this case, the vehicle. But also if it was a whole environment, I would have a list of just different props and modular pieces I need to make and finish it. And so when I get to the production side of it, I'm doing art pass and I'm setting up lods and materials and textures and I'm worried about polishing all this stuff so it's you know not worried about coming up with the design anymore at a certain point so at this stage what happens is if i can establish a base form the overall idea that's great but it's nowhere near even done even for concept because i'm going to want to more than likely either continue to improve upon this until i have about at least 90 percent of this um this vehicle done basically right like in a sense of it being um uh, it can function mechanically to some degree. Most likely, um, all the design elements will be placed onto it. For the most part, I might throw some decals on it, things like that, just to see how it would look with um, that going on. Also, like material or like color scheming, I might change the color scheming around a little bit, stuff like that. Uh, but I'm going to iterate on it as well, possibly, where, you know, like maybe this thing isn't working out for me like this. Maybe I'll change that out. It's also a possibility I change out the entire vehicle too, depending on it, if, if I could continue to go with it, basically. So I might just work on the environment for a bit and then uh, decide that, you know, like maybe I could try a different vehicle in here and see if it would look better as it all comes together a little bit more. So I get to change big things still at this point and I'm not locked in on anything yet. Like it's an hour down for the block out here of this thing, but it's still much better than doing a whole vehicle and then trying to change it last minute. Um, I have that, that opportunity at least to make those big changes during this rough modeling phase or this dirty modeling phase and not be entirely committed to just this setup as it is right now. And so I can do different variations, but I can completely swap it if I want. It doesn't matter. And I get to just explore more. Uh, I'm more free to explore ideas and I'm not set in stone, right? Like if I can make, like if I want to make changes, this is the time to start exploring those changes. I'm not going to do it later on when I'm doing a polishing pass on this, right? And so if I'm going to commit any more time to this, like I need to determine probably about at this stage, am I committed to this idea or not? Like, is this going to be the piece that goes here? Uh, personally, I would probably want to do a couple of variations of this and try out a couple of different ideas, but it depends on your time limit, time frame. If you don't have time to do that, then what you would want to do is just uh, maybe make some corrections on this thing, change it a slight bit, um, and then just run with it and then start detailing it a little bit more. Uh, modeling it out to concept a little bit more so than this, and then pushing it into production. So like in automotive design, or automotive manufacturing and all that. Uh, they start with like design concept and they iterate in a loop on the concept for a little bit. And then they're gonna go to what they call a concept block. And so once they do that, they move to the production side of things. They're gonna actually think about how they turn their vehicles into real vehicles on a production line and whatnot. They don't mess with the design anymore, much at all, if any. So same kind of thing needs to happen for yourself. And what you're gonna find is that being able to freely explore concept as fast as, as I was with this project here, you're going to find that there's a lot of momentum. Like you get, you gain a lot of momentum in that. Like you're establishing all these objects you might need to create or this vehicle or the variations of this vehicle. And you're not fully going through the art pass. So you're able to change things very quick. And uh, it's just, you, you get a momentum through the whole project because of that. 
you shouldn't be getting hung up. Like the more you kind of play around with your ideas here, very rough and loose at first, as you go through the art pass, you'll have more purpose behind the model. So you're not going to spend as much time uh, fooling around with things and, and then having to redo things like um, bevels and whatnot, right? Because you're going to lock in on that design and it'll be able to, the momentum that you have here will carry through onto the production side of things as well. Because you're going to already know what you need for a scene or a set for the most part. And you're just going to be working that production side later on. So you got like a toolbox. You already know what size it needs to be and or what size you wanted it to be. Now you just got to pull in some references of toolboxes and go to town doing a high poly, bake into a low poly, and, and calling it done. Even if you have to go to that, I mean, you could be doing mid poly workflow. You could just maybe take this and finish it up to a mid poly and texture it up and call it done. Add some decals or whatever. So this step here, this first hour to two hours, just working on the project, going super fast, um, kind of relaxed with it. Uh, builds a momentum to the whole project that carries you through basically to the rest, to the end of it, uh, all the way through the art pass, in my opinion. Right, that's how it works out for myself anyways. And so hopefully it helps you out and knowing what dirty modeling is now and also how to really build up that momentum, I guess. It, it's, it, this should be fun. This should be fast and it should be very enjoyable process being able to work this way, right? And this is, in my opinion, the most efficient way of working any kind of 3D that you're going to create. Okay. So hopefully this video helps you in some way and hope you enjoyed. I'll check you out in the next one. All right. Take care.